We've all seen the solar system pictures in textbooks. The Sun slightly larger than Jupiter. But that isn't the right depiction of the scales. The Sun is so massive that you could fit about 1,000 Jupiters inside. Impressive as it is, our Sun isn't the biggest star in the universe or even our galaxy. That title goes to UY Scuti, and compared to it, our star is like a tiny pebble. But there's more. Scientists have stumbled upon something even more mind-boggling. An enigmatic ancient star with a black hole inside. It's an astronomical mystery that both puzzles scientists and can potentially explain how the universe came to be what it is today. But how is it possible for a black hole to exist inside a star? Why were these stars so gigantic? And what would happen if a black hole star wandered into the solar system? Stars are like cosmic blacksmiths. In their fiery cores, they're forging the majority of the elements we observe in the universe. But the stars that could have existed at the very beginning of the universe were something different. Instead of conventional stellar cores, they harbored black holes within, allowing them to grow to unimaginable sizes and beyond. Ordinary stars arise from the clouds of gas and dust as gravity makes the densest regions of the cloud collapse. The resulting mass of material heats up and creates a protostar, an early stage in the evolution of a star. Eventually, the newly formed hot core accumulates enough matter from the surrounding rotating disk of gas, becoming a main sequence star that starts producing energy through nuclear fusion. It took our Sun about 50 million years to reach this phase. The majority of stars will spend most of their lifespan as main sequence stars. But eventually, they will either become white dwarfs if their mass isn't big enough or go supernovae. After a star blows up, it can end up as a black hole or a neutron star, and the path it takes depends on how massive it was. When our Sun runs out of hydrogen in about 5 billion years, it will turn into a red giant, expanding 200 times in size before finally shedding its outer layers and transforming into a white dwarf, a celestial object that's roughly 200,000 times denser than the Earth but about the same size. This dense sphere will slowly cool to about 18 million degrees Fahrenheit, and in about 10 billion years, the white dwarf sun will crystallize. The process is somewhat similar to how water turns into ice. Although the material is different, in the case of the sun, it will be carbon and oxygen solidifying. And stars over 10 times the mass of the sun will have a different fate. They're big enough for their cores to collapse after a supernova, but they lack the mass required to become black holes. So where does this leave them? Deep inside these stars, the extreme pressure squeezes every proton and electron so tightly, they merge to form neutrons. Neutrons cannot be compressed any further, so they counter gravitational pressure and the star finds a new balance. Neutron stars are the densest objects in the universe apart from black holes. They can be just the size of a small city, roughly 12 miles, but still have a mass of the Sun. On Earth, neutron star material the size of a sugar cube would weigh as much as 1 billion tons, about as heavy as a mountain. But how do stars become black holes? While the star is still active, the two prevailing forces work against each other. Nuclear fusion and the intense gravity created by the star's own mass trying to squish it. Once there's no fuel left to power nuclear fusion, there's no longer a force to counter gravity and the star collapses on itself, just like the controlled demolition of a concrete building. Einstein believed that anything could become a black hole if it had sufficient mass and was compressed inside a certain radius. Black holes keep on growing throughout their lifespan, devouring any material that gets too close. When this happens, the region where gravitational pull becomes so strong that nothing can escape increases, and the black hole consumes even more nearby material. It's somewhat like the sinking of ground due to the collapse of underground structures. 
although with black holes, it's a gravitational sinkhole, gradually accelerating as its event horizon grows. Normally, black holes have a limit on how fast they can expand. This happens because of something called the Eddington Luminosity Limit. Basically, it's the point at which a black hole can't take in material faster than it already does. If you were filling a car tire with air and it had small holes in it, the increased pressure inside would make some of the excess air escape. In space, something similar happens with rotating black holes. As matter spirals towards a black hole, it goes faster and faster. Because of this, about 42% of this matter can be converted into energy. And this radiation is so powerful, it can push some of that incoming material away, just like a car tire pushes the air away. This process is so efficient, the radiation emitted away surpasses the energy output from nuclear fusion in stars. Just imagine a future where we find a way to harness this energy and use it for our needs. Even supermassive black holes with a large surface area that attracts matter have this limit. They are at the center of almost every galaxy out there, and some of these supermassive black holes have been recently discovered to be much larger than we thought. That's one of the greatest mysteries in astronomy. The gradual accumulation of matter over the edge of the universe fails to explain their enormous size. But there's something that might unravel the mystery. Black hole stars, or quasi-stars, must have been the largest celestial bodies to ever exist, dwarfing even the most gigantic black holes we've discovered so far. Today, the conditions of the universe do not allow black hole stars to form. But at the beginning of time, space was packed with massive gas clouds. Within these dense regions of space, material collapsed in on itself under its own gravity. And because there was so much of it, it piled up, giving rise to baby stars of extraordinary magnitude. Although there's an idea that they may have originated from dark matter halos, Invisible spherical regions of dark matter of up to 100 million solar masses where thousands of supermassive stars could form. Normally large stars would go supernova and leave behind massive black holes. But these celestial giants weren't just large, they were so huge, their size allowed them to absorb the explosive force that would otherwise shoot the star's outer layers out into space. Instead, these ancient stars only experienced implosions, which transformed their stellar cores into tiny black holes, while keeping the outer layers intact. If you could somehow observe this phenomenon from a close distance, you wouldn't even notice any changes within the star. Now that there's a baby black hole inside a quasi-star, it starts eating it from the inside. At this point, the black hole is tiny, but it's spinning, and this creates a disk of hot material, circling it at nearly the speed of light. On top of that, there's no longer a limit on how fast it can devour gas, as the star's pressure sends it straight into the black hole. The friction within the accretion disk becomes hotter and hotter, emitting tons of radiation and making the hot star glow like a small galaxy. Quasi-stars, if they existed, grew faster than any black hole we've ever observed. Eventually, within millions of years, some of them would be the largest stars and black holes in size that we know about. Like Stevenson 218, UI Scuti, and Tun 618. Just how large is that? From thousands of times larger than the Sun, to potentially even the diameter of our solar system and beyond. But this gargantuan size and mass also causes problems. The larger the quasi-stars become, the shorter their lifespan. Our Sun has been around for over 4 billion years, with approximately 6 billion years left in its lifespan. While black hole stars lasted for just a few million years, before spectacularly exploding with unprecedented power, releasing an ever-hungry, monstrous black hole ready to drift across space in search of more material to gobble up. But what if a star like this wandered into our peaceful celestial neighborhood? Once a quasi-star found its way into the solar system, its gravitational influence would disrupt the established orbits of planets and celestial bodies. The once orderly planetary system would be in total chaos, with Earth experiencing a severe asteroid rain. The effects would start before the quasi-star entered our solar system completely. 
As the gigantic star swallows the outer planets and other celestial bodies, our planet would already experience a surge in temperature and luminosity, making the surface inhospitable until finally it would consume the Earth too, although life here would long be gone by then. The central black holes within quasi-stars could have served as seeds for the formation of supermassive black holes that are at the centers of galaxies today. And they might have even played a bigger role. The dynamic processes associated with quasi-stars, such as the collapse of the central black hole and interaction with the surrounding matter, could be potent sources of gravitational waves, which in turn may have played a role in the formation of galactic structures and the distribution of stars within galaxies. But not just that, quasi-stars could have implications for astrobiology. The intense radiation from these objects might have affected the habitability of planets in their vicinity, potentially shaping the conditions for life in unexpected ways. That said, in the context of cosmic evolution, quasi-stars might have set the future by shaping the early universe in unthinkable ways. But here's another mind-blowing thought for you. Although there are probably no quasi-stars in our universe today, tiny black holes roughly the mass of an asteroid from the dawn of time might still be here. Theoretical physicists speculate that if such black holes were abundant, they could be drifting around space, sometimes ending up trapped within gas clouds. There, as new stars would be born, primordial black holes would eventually find their way into the star's cores. Even black holes the mass of Pluto would grow enormously within just a few hundred million years, a relatively short period of time in the star's evolution. So, even our Sun could have one, which the great late Stephen Hawking once suggested. If it hid a black hole about as massive as Mercury, we wouldn't even notice it, although it's very unlikely. But there's one method scientists think might help identify such cosmic containers for primordial black holes. For one, the so-called Hawking stars would be much more long-lasting. And to cool off, Hawking stars expand into red giants, something our sun will do as it ages. But red giants with a tiny black hole inside would be a bit cooler than they normally are. Researchers have already detected about 500 abnormally cool red giant stars. To find out whether these stars hide primordial black holes within, scientists plan to observe the stars' unique vibrations as they pulsate, which could signify they indeed aren't ordinary red giants. And here's another mind-bending thought for you. Some believe that the mysterious dark matter that prevails in the universe is in fact a swarm of miniature, countless, primordial black holes. And so, while it's extremely improbable that a black hole like that would end up captured by a star, if there's an immeasurable number of them, at least some would. We'll have to wait till scientists figure that one out for us. But for now, that's all the time we have. Stay tuned here for more thrilling cosmic mysteries and fascinating discoveries. Let us know what you think about the enigmatic quasi-stars in the comments below. We read them all. And thanks for watching.